Hello everyone, we learned how to script the HTML content of a website and created a mini dataset for feature engineering part. Now we will define functions one by one and we will use beautiful soap model. And we will complete the step 5 and step 6 in our roadmap. Before starting the code, I want to remind that the most important phase is understanding the problem. If you don't understand or misunderstand the problem, designing code implementation parts will be wrong or missing. In our first phase, we made a literature review and inspected some content-based phishing studies. Eventually, you should have listed some content-based features. Of course, you can obtain a different list, but for now, I made a literature review phase for you and listed some features. This will be enough, but you can always think other content-based features. I divided our features into two different types. Some of them will have only one or zero as a value, that means they are binary features. One means yes and zero means no for these features. For example, has title or has input HTML tag feature describes if the content has an input tag or not. If yes, then the value should be one. If not, then the value should be zero. Other ones, other types are quantitative features. They can have any value starting from 0 to n, for example, number of input texts or length of title. This is our feature list, and as you estimate, each of them will have numerical value. I will explain the reason why we have numerical values for this later. Now we will code a function for each feature with the help of beautiful soap model. Okay, let's start. Okay, I am creating a new Python file. I will call it features. I will define all content-based features in this file and then when we need any of them, we will import this. So first of all, we should import beautiful soap module. So from now as an example, I will create a soap variable by reading our one of HTML file in the many dataset folder. And after defining each function, I will check them with this example HTML. So first of all, let's let with open. Here you should add some file name and I will just copy one of them, for example, 9HTML. And I will call test equals f.read. Then I will create a soap variable via beautiful soap module. So soap equals beautiful soap. Here I will give test and HTML.parser Okay, now we have an example soap variable and we can use these variable in, to test our features, our feature functions. Okay, now I will add our feature list to here. I just copy and paste as a comment. And let's start with has title feature. So it's quite easy. We say dev has title. I will give soap as a parameter to each if then so that title that text then return one as return zero because if there is a title text the length of this text should be bigger than zero then we can say that return one when the title text is bigger than zero and else return zero. Okay, some of you can think that the sub the title can be enough, but actually sometimes they can add HTML text as title, but the text can be empty. Therefore, I created function like that. And that's all. And as you see, it's quite simple. Now uh, let's look at another one. Here we will use very beneficial beautiful sub method find all and this method finds what you give inside the parenthesis and return a list. Therefore I will write if len so find all inside input else means find all methods return an empty list if the list is empty then we can say we don't have any input tag we will define so many functions with this find all methods and let's continue a 
And be careful inside the parentheses here. I'm not writing random strings. I know that there is a HTML tag as input or button or script, so I'm writing them. Let's assume that there is no tag like button, but it is an attribute of HTML tag. Then I will do something slightly different. You can define so many functions with this structure only if your parameter is a HTML tag. Don't forget that. Let's continue with button function. If then So I will skip similar functions which have same structure. Now we have something different, has submit. This means check if the HTML content has any submit button. This is an important feature for the phishing because sometimes attackers can request your credentials or some private information with this kind of buttons. Okay, let's define it. Again, it is very easy. Or button. Mm. Pass and check all other button types. If you cannot find any button with submit type, then return zero. Remember that find all methods gives us a list with this parameter, list of buttons. Let's look at one of HTML content here. As you see, submit is a type of button in here. Type of button. That's why I wrote button.get type here button that get type equals submit and has link feature has same structure with has input or has image so let's skip it next one is has password here we have something different let's search password in an html file As you see, sometimes type or name of the input tag can be password. Uh, sometimes ID also can be password. Therefore, we should do something different from the previous ones for this feature. Let's do it together. If type or name or turn one. As you see, we just added these all and all other possible conditions here. As email input feature has the same structure with has password, so I will skip it. Has hidden element also similar with the previous one. If you look at the content of the HTML file, you can see some input types as hidden. As you see, this input tag has type as hidden and the structure is the same so I will skip it too his audio and his video features are also the same okay we completed has something features the binary ones now we can define the quantitative features the first one is number of inputs you can probably estimate how we can define the functions with find all method Let's do it together. Swap as parameter again. If 
there is no input tag, then the result will be zero. Otherwise, it will be something bigger than zero. The number of buttons is the same with the number of inputs. And the next one, number of images, and here we have something again slightly different. If you look at the HTML file, you can see that sometimes there is no image tag, but meta tag has type or name as image. So we have two different scenarios here, therefore we can write something like that. Match tags. This will give us HTML image tags, number of HTML image tags. We also find to know that if there are some meta HTML tags, which type or name is image. That's all. As you see, number of images example, sometimes we can miss some features. Therefore, before defining each feature, you should analyze the HTML content. You should check which tags are available, what are their attributes, their type, name. This kind of information can be very important to define functions. Okay, we have other number of something features, number of option, list, and table elements. And they are all same, so they have same structure, therefore I will skip it. As you see, they are so simple and easy. And the next one is number of href. Here, you can see that href is not a major HTML tag. However, you can find href to do link HTML tag. Therefore, we can define the function like that. Count plus zero for link in sub dot find all. And that's all. Number of paragraph and number of script also are similar. There is no something special here, so I will skip them too. As you see, they are same. They are similar. And now the last one, length of title. So it's also quite simple. Length of subtitle. Text. And that's all. We defined all features. Now let's print them and see the values for different examples. I already prepared this print command line for you. Therefore, just copy paste here. Run it. Okay. As you see, each of them different values. Let's change the input file like zero and see. They have different, for example, 56 for 1, 63, yeah. It seems it's working. Now we should run these functions for each HTML file one by one and create a data frame. In other words, we will design our feature extraction process. Before coding, I want to show what we will have after feature extraction. At the beginning, we have HTML files, then we define some functions. For features with these feature functions we will obtain something like that eventually we will convert our unstructured data to structured data